Good morrow, people of the Internetiverse. So, welcome to another episode of Story of a Life, where today I'm going to talk about when I made a comedian laugh on stage during his set. So, <clears throat> a few years back, um, a few friends of mine and me found that uh, this comedian was going to be playing at local theatre at the Artrix in Bromsgrove, and... Uh, he all bought tickets and decided we were going to go along because for the first time in as long as I can remember somebody actually famous was coming into Bromsgrove and we could actually afford to see them. So uh, bought these tickets and went to go see them and uh, about a day or two before we found out that uh, they were going to be appearing on the One show in uh, few weeks like this was their last little tour and once they'd done this they were on the one show then and they'd you know they were going to be on syndicated television for the rest of their career and they were going to be blasting off into the depths of fame and all of that sort of thing so we all sort of decided we, ha we had to make most use of this as we could we had to you know join us while we can because they might you might not ever go off on tour and do any more stand-up ever so uh decided we had to enjoy every minute of it and uh so we uh we showed up and uh we got seats pretty much at the very back was where we were we were against like the back wall so you could see down and uh, see over everybody so you could see everything but it being only a small theater the distance wasn't really that much of an issue and uh he went through his first half of the set and uh, it was really good we had a great time and we were uh, laughing along we found oh, he said uh, that I can't remember what it was I think it was words that you used to say or believe were pronounced differently so instead of hospital the horse piddle or something like that to take one of the letters from the front of the stage write them down and put them in this um, little basket it got set up because he was going to do a bit about all of them and so we uh, we came out and we were sat there during the interval for like 15 20 minutes racking our brains desperately trying to think of some and we thought nothing we, we couldn't contribute we felt really bad because we desperately want oh i know i did i don't necessarily know how much the others did but i desperately wanted to be able to put at least a little thing into it but i i couldn't think of anything so uh <clears throat> we came back from the uh, the interval, we came in and uh, sat down in our chairs again and he did, did all the things out of the basket and everybody got like a good titter out of the, uh, the various silly things we uh, pronounced wrong when we were kids. And then uh, when it got to near the end, he asked, seeing as it's such a, compared to where he's from and compared to where all the uh, other big places he was doing his tours, we were quite a small town, so he's like, oh, small town like this, I'm sure loads of weird things happen, what's the weirdest thing you've seen, and was asking for, you know, suggestions from the audience, so my hand's straight up, I've got, you know, the perfect one, hand up, and he's asking these people, and that person, oh, I saw somebody riding a bike naked, riding a bike naked without a seat, um, a man running through the streets, waving his arms, didn't have the heart to say that that was probably me, and, uh, we came to, came to all of them had been answered except me, and he goes, oh, yeah, um, the guy at the back, yeah, yeah, you, uh, what's your one? And everybody, you know, normally you'd think at the back of a theatre, somebody trying to suggest something to the stage could be an issue. They're never going to get heard, and it'll just be pointless. If you think that, you've obviously not listened to anything I've ever done in my entire life. I was fine. I was louder than he was on the mic. Um, he asked me what mine was, and I, uh, in the most regular, like, I didn't put any emphasis or any exaggerated to my voice, as if I was telling the story to my nan, she said, oh, I saw a man walking three guinea pigs on a lead. And he sort of smiled and just went, oh, okay, um, where? my back garden and he lost it he started laughing his ass off 
and thought this was brilliant. And he was giggling away and thought, you know, what a brilliant story. And he carried on with his set and did the, the last five, ten minutes, closed up and off he went. But for me, it was a brilliant moment because I managed to make a comedian whose life is comedy laugh that much from something so simple. And it's made, it made me think, well, maybe I could do comedy. Maybe I can do something with my life more towards making everybody else laugh. And look at me now. <laughs> <coughs> sort of punctuates the point really well, doesn't it, really? Choking as I say it. <sighs> but anyway... That comedian isn't on the one show anymore. He was taken off almost a week later with some huge, like, sex scandal or picture thing. I don't know. I just know that when we were going to see him, oh, it's going to be on the one show. Mentioned it to somebody a week later. No, it's not going to be on the one show. Stuff's happened. <laughs> so, oh, well, that's a story about me making Jason Manford laugh. See you around, YouTube.